good morning <laughs> i was just looking at the time for my camera welcome to my youtube channel where i talk about all things having to do with the duke and duchess of sussex prince harry the duke of sussex and his beautiful wife megan duchess of sussex so i'm a fan girl and i hope you are too and even if you're not, I hope we can agree to live and let live. So I'm on a sabbatical in theory. I guess I'm no longer on sabbatical. Who am I kidding? I'm not, no longer on this. The sabbatical is over. It lasted two days. I was hoping to take at least a week off, but it didn't work out. There's just too much happening. And I had to report on it. And so where are we now? So now we're with this thing with King Charles and the... Um, the eviction notice that has been allegedly served on Harry and Meghan to vacate Frogmore Cottage. And so last night, I, before just before going to bed, I did uh, a video. I did two videos yesterday about it. One is that Meghan and Harry do not need Frogmore Cottage, and I stand by that. And the other is that I'm very frustrated with Megan and Harry, and I stand by that as well. So I went to bed very frustrated, woke up still frustrated with the whole situation. Um, because why am I frustrated? I'm frustrated because, um, you know, I'm too personally involved and I need to back, back, back away a little bit. I don't know Megan and Harry after all. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I know Megan and Harry, but I don't. I mean, I don't know any of these people. This is just this is just a soap opera. I, but I used to get this this way with, with with soap operas like General Hospital and stuff like that. When I was a teenager, I so identify with the characters that it's like I really knew them, and 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 I don't. I mean, you know, they're strangers, and I'm just watching some stuff unfold, and I need to keep perspective and not. Be, be so fully like immersed and invested in it and in the outcome and in everything these people do and say. Um, these people being all of these people, all these characters, not just Harry and Meghan, all the characters in this in this soap opera. So now the thing with Charles evicting Meghan and Harry from Frogmore Cottage to me is is not good for for anybody. First, as I said, for Harry and Meghan, the optics are not good because it puts them in a position of defense. It puts them in a position of weakness. You know, I think that had they been more proactive rather than now being forced to be reactive, it would have been a better look for them, especially after the success of Spare. Spare was a very, very successful rollout, a very successful PR campaign for Harry. The press in the UK and in Australia did their very best to turn it into a negative, but it was a very, very successful project. And I felt like right after that, Harry and Meghan needed to just not be seen at all for a while, like cancel everything. Don't let anybody see them until after the coronation. I have my reasons for that. You know, I, I have a, the way I think it, it just would have been a very successful um, way to go. Just disappear, you know, riding off, let's spare, simmer, you know. Now, while they're in their house for three months or wherever they are, I'm not advocating just sitting there looking at the walls. I wanted them working on projects, which I'm sure they are, but really working on ideas and letting the press foam at the mouth wondering where the heck they were. But I also needed them to make a public announcement to say that they are on a sabbatical, right, indefinitely, and that they would not be attending the coronation because they would they think it's in the best interest for everybody to meet privately with their family and boom finished right something very short and sweet and loving and then they would have tried to arrange with the king to meet him privately and let him say no which she probably would have anyway but let him say no 
but you know, make it be known publicly, etc. I think this this strategy would have been better for Meghan and Harry. And then, of course, I had all these ideas about them finding a castle outside of the UK, here in France or elsewhere. It doesn't have to be in France. This would have been you know, made them look like they're in the driver's seat. And then had they done that, when Charles did his eviction notice, Charles would have looked petty and groveling and mean and vindictive, which probably those adjectives might still be attributed to him in in a way, but it takes on a whole different context because of they, they, you know, the timing, timing matters, you see, and context matters. And when you do things matter, right? Because now if Harry and Meghan were to take a sabbatical now or issue a public statement saying that they're not going to the coronation for any reason at all now, even if the reason is they were not invited, it does not have the same impact. It does not have the same impact because a frogmore eviction is a, is huge. And why were they in this position in the first place? Now, months ago, I said, look, you have to establish a presence in England. You have to be there three months out of the year consecutively or non-consecutively, whatever the case may be. Um, they didn't do that. So in a way, you know, you have a house sitting there empty collecting dust, you know, it, it, it's a problem in and of itself. So on a certain level, Charles can justify why he did why he did. But, you know, letting him be the one to evict is like strategically, I think, not great for the Sussexes because the optics are now that they're weakened they are victimized, they are on the defensive. Um, it's not the right look, you know? So I'm very frustrated about that. <sighs> so now what, what do we do? Now what we do, I mean, again, I'm, I'm a Sunday afternoon quarterback, right? But I'm not really a Sunday afternoon quarterback because I am proactively coming up with ideas to which Everybody has turned a deaf air, you see, and and that is a frustration. But again, this is a soap opera. I have to see this as a soap opera. This is their real life, but for me, this is a soap opera. So I can't get so emotionally involved and give myself a conniption, and and then everybody will be fine, and then I'm I'm like, you know, sidelined because of my conniption. Um, but here's the thing that I'm thinking this morning as I woke up. And that is that Charles, this could backfire on Charles and on the royal family um, in general, because the optics for him as well are not good. I mean, anybody who read Harry's book in any objective fashion whatsoever, and if they're honest, will say that Harry did not throw his father under the bus. He really did not. I mean, he humanized his father. And I mean, even I softened on his father, maybe wrongly, maybe wrongly, I don't know. But I thought he humanized his father. He was mean, you could say, mean in quotes towards Camilla in the sense that he spared no punches with her. I mean, he was brutal with her. And if anybody in this book, I mean, if anybody has any justification for being upset about this book, it's Camilla. And it is my opinion that Camilla is behind the eviction and she is behind everything that's coming next um, in this in this soap opera right? Because she's not happy. And who would be happy in her situation if Harry was as candid as he was about how he feels about her and, you know, his perceptions of her, right? So Camilla is behind this. She's married to Charles. She has a powerful influence over Charles, obviously. I mean, she got Charles to leave his wife, <laughs> the King of England, left his young, beautiful wife 
for this woman who was so much less attractive, among other older, married, etc. That's power, right? She has power over Charles, period. Okay. He is, um, he's onto her spell. He's whipped, whatever. I mean, she runs the show. <laughs> Camilla is in charge. And so if Camilla is not happy, Charles will have no peace until she's happy. And in my view, in this soap opera, Harry's book was not met with a lot of um, appreciation by Camilla. And so Camilla is going to see to it that Harry is punished. And so the Frogmore eviction was um, a part of that, just a part. She's just getting started. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's all in the same, in the same, uh, it looks like it's all in the same, um, you know, the same visit, uh, you know, with, with Macron in, in Paris and so on. Okay. So I advised Harry and Megan to, um, to take control a few days ago. And I really needed them to, to understand that the need for strategy, I don't know who their advisors are. I don't even know if they have strategic advisors and, you know, it, it's so important that I'm sure they have advisors, but what are these advisors advising them to do? Because optics matter, right? But this video really, as I woke up this morning and I know I'm all over the place because I'm just like, oh my God, um, is to say that the optics for Charles right now, even though he thinks that they're great, are not great. And I, I don't think they're going to age well. The optics for Charles on this and how he has handled his son and his daughter-in-law and his grandchildren will not age well. You know, this is not going to be like a, a Bordeaux wine that ages well. This is going to stink as it ages um, because it makes, Charles comes off as very cruel and very um, complicit and very catty. I mean, very, I don't even know what, what, what words to use here. This, this eviction, um, from Frogmore and this installation of Prince Andrew in, under these circumstances, I think will eventually be the unraveling of, of this royal family, because you, you already heard that Beatrice and Eugenie are not happy. Andrew also is not happy with Charles for being evicted from his posh Royal Lodge 30 room house and thrown into this very unsexy frogmore. But the, the thing is that Megan and Harry paid millions of, of pounds, over 2 million pounds to renovate frogmore number one, or oh, that's number two. Number one is it was a gift to them by the queen for the duration of their marriage. That's a gift, right? And Charles just kicked his mother in the teeth by usurping her with this. And so soon after her death, he took away what she intended to be for Meghan and Harry. So this is bad luck for him and for whoever follows in this house. Um, so he did that. Then Meghan and Harry put so much money into this house and paid the British people this money. You know, they paid the money back to the sovereign grant and they had a lease. So this is bad faith. You know, you don't do that to someone, whether they're your son or not. Anybody who does this to someone else is in the wrong. You're in the wrong. This person has a lease this person has paid, you don't do this to them. You don't for any reason, right? Number three, he gives it, not only does he take it away, but he gives it to Andrew and puts Andrew in a very, very 
dirty position because Andrew already has his PR problems because of what happened here. I'm going to run out of space. I can't, I've got to stop this video and make another one. But Andrew has his problems and putting Andrew in Frogmore is, is putting Andrew in the line of fire and wrath of the public. And it's dirty. It's a dirty move. And I have a strong feeling that Camilla is behind it. They want to eject Andrew from the family completely to just throw him onto the streets. They don't know how to do it. So put him, put him at the wrath of the people, right? Put him in the fire and they want to, you know, hurt Megan and Harry, but this is going to backfire on Charles and Camilla because I think that the public eventually are going to catch on to what they're up to and there's going to be pushback, I think, and maybe even before the coronation, there's going to be pushback on this.